Hello and welcome back to another episode of My Passive Manager. I'm your host, Captain Betty Man FM, and I welcome you to this football manager experiment where we take my passive to absolute nowhere to his dream job as England manager. And if you did not watch the last episode, we have made it to England. The FA picked Mike as their new manager of the national team, the Free Lions. But can his football do the talking and make England into a powerhouse and push them onto international glory? I'm just going to show you. How we got on since we were last game, obviously, we played the Sweden and Bolivia games. They were our first two games as in charge of the national team. And then since then, we played against Holland and Tunisia in a friendly. And first up, obviously, was Holland at home in the Euro Euro European League Division A Group 2 game, where we drew by one goal to one. Harry Kane getting the penalty and then a goal in the second half with only 13 minutes ago from Ryan Gravenbach. Got the equaliser. Uh, man of the match in that game was Frankie Dion, who was playing central defence. That man can do no wrong. But there was a friendly only a couple of days later against Tunisia. And it was two goals by two of the new boys, Ed Ewison and Gavin Barsby, getting on the score sheet to give England all three points. Well, not three points, but you know what? To give England the win in the friendly. We've pushed on quite a while now. We've gone from October all the way to November. And it's two crucial games when it comes to winning the International League Division A Group 2. Because it's the big one, you know that. Sweden are already relegated from this. So the first game should be a no-brainer. We should go and win that. We're at home at Wembley. And then we are playing Holland away. Anything else to bring you? I think when we come back, I will also show you some of the players that I have integrated into the team. I'll do that probably on the tactics page when we go to the game. And that game is right here. As you can see, I don't really plan these episodes. I just do them off the cuff. So if I go into some sort of ramble every so often, it's just because I'm not sure what to say. <laughs> this is what we're going to go with. So as you can see, there's a couple of players that have lost their position since the last game against Tunisia. There's also a few players that were put in there because there were some players that were low on fitness, etc. kind of thing. I'm going to go to Steve Holland and say, Steve, what do you think? And this is what he thinks. Do you know what? I'm going to agree with him. <laughs> this is how we're going to look into getting out of Angus Gunn is going to be the third goalkeeper that we've tried out since becoming manager. Well, actually, no, we, we have tried out Paul, Paul Cooper. But apparently, Paul Cooper was the goalkeeper in the World Cup and hasn't really played since then. He plays at Everton in real life on the game. But Angus Gunn is going to be our first choice goalkeeper because we did drop Jordan Pickford. I have got a thing. If you're not playing for your team then you're not going to be match sharp, you're not going to be fit, and you don't deserve to play for the international team. I want players that have got 100% match sharpness, they're on the ball, they're playing regularly for their first team, uh, for their clubs. When I've dropped players like the captain, Lewis Cook, Jordan Pickford, for instance, they've come to me and asked me why I've dropped them. And I've said to them, first up, it's because you are not playing for your first team club. There's a new starter, a player that's going to get his first cap against Sweden, and this is Dom Baker. Don Baker is playing for Watford on loan from Chelsea. See, as you say, getting first team football, his attributions are getting better. He's getting better as a player. Get yourself in there. Under 21 international and he's pushed into the first team. And I'm very happy to have him. Jack Grealish is back after being dropped for the last game against Holland. And we've got another regen as well, Aaron Dix. Yes, so Dickey as just signed for Mainz in Germany to get first team football from Manchester United. He'd been loaned all over the place for the last couple of seasons, playing 11 games. And you know what? He's a decent, decent player. First team player for Mainz in the Bundesliga. And you know what? Coming up from the under 21s, he's now got himself onto the bench for the first team. And it's the same with Alan Simpson. If he's only just, he's only just come back from injuries, Alan Simpson, so he's not going to start. He got his first cap, 68 million pound signing from Wolves. For Liverpool over the summer and this kid is starting behind the strikers but Deli Alley is going to start actually today because of his fitness problems as you can see 81% only fitness. Mick Thompson on the other hand is our best striker. On paper he is the best striker. He doesn't play. How am I supposed to start him for this national team if he's not playing for Arsenal? He needs to get in the Arsenal team and start getting some goals. It's the same with Kenneth Brown. Harry Kane is on fire for Manchester United at 33 years old. Nine goals, 11 goals in all competitions. He's not getting kicked out just yet. But anyway, I hope that's just kind of gone into the squad a little bit more. Just keep you all updated and fresh. So Gunn is the starter. Trent Alexander-Arnold, 
Gomez, Fry and Sessegnon at the back. Baker and Babsy in the middle with Yusin, Ali, Sancho and Harry Kane up top. Let's go and do this, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go and win the game. Trent Alexander-Arnold is the captain today. They're going very defensive with pretty much six at the back. We're going quite positive with our mindset. Um, yeah, do it for the fans, boys. Absolutely do it for the fans. I'm going to listen to Steve Holland on that one. And then I'm going to come in calmly and I'm going to say, yeah, I believe you have what it takes. None of them have really, really been motivated by that or anything like that. But there's no one with the face on. So I'm happy with that. All we're going to do is go out and get the win today. Get the win. It'll take us to the last game against Holland. And that will be a decider to who comes top of that group. There's a highlight for Sweden. Well, I say Sweden. It's down in their, their end. The ball is bouncing around. It's a good header from Gomez. Deli Ali picks it up. It comes Ed Ewinson. And Ewinson goes for it. That's a penalty all day long, referee. And this kid is very, very good. This Manchester United youngster. Five shots already for England. Harry Kane is going to step up. Can he put the ball into the back of the net? He can. He's already scored four goals for me. Lee. Already in this little short period of time, Harry Kane has scored four goals for Mike Bassett. And when I was saying when I first took over that he might be the player, the most highest profile player that could be dropped out of this team because of his age, he has just ripped up that rule book and just said, screw you, Mike Bassett. I am going for 100 goals. I think he's down to at least 16, uh, no, he's down to 14 goals to get to 100. And I think he could do it in the next two years. Today could be, if he can get a hat trick or something like that today, he is massively on course. Anyway, here we go. Here comes Jewison again to Deli Halley. Deli Halley now. He's got Sessignon running down that left hand side. Can he get the ball into the box? He certainly can. There's Harry Kane again. And what was I just saying? Kane on the end of a Sessignon cross. It's his second goal after 19 minutes. He is on absolute fire, ladies and gentlemen. 33. Pa. Just get out. Get out, what a player, what a man, Mr. Harry Kane, setting on with the ball in there, an England lead by two goals to nil, and we are absolutely running riot. Ah, Gavin Babsy has got injured, he is our best midfielder, by an absolute landslide, he's very good. Jack Carter, who is a bit of a mental case, doesn't really like being told what to do, that's why Baker has come in today. Carter's been on the bench and Babsy has fell into that Mazala role. I think these three in the middle, if Lewis Cook comes back, starts playing for Chelsea a little bit more, then he can push himself back into because apparently he's our best midfielder. But I'm not playing players if they're not playing for their first team. Looks like we're going to go to the break and we've absolutely battered them. 17 shots, six on target and Sweden have not had a sniff of anything so far. Um, I'm going to tell the lads that I am very pleased with the way things are going. Go back out there and just continue what you're doing. Coming up to 60 minutes though and it's Tibbling. Gets the ball to the box, stay ahead. It Fry clears it, apparently off the line, but I doubt it was on the line. He cleared it from the six yard box, gets it away for a corner. And Sweden are now going to push for this. Ball goes into the box and Angus Gunn does really well and gathers it with ease. And that is probably their best chance they've had so far. I'm going to go on to the bench, though. Cats on a 6.4, not having the best game in the world. I'm also looking at Sancho, who is not having the best game of his life out there. Raheem Sterling is sat on the bench. I think that's what will uh, get him on the field, at least. Is there anyone else who's not really performing very well out there? Cat is just having an absolutely terrible game out there. But we'll leave it at that. Sancho... Not really doing much on the left-hand side, but Raheem Sterling could do something, I suppose. Uh, Jack Grealish is on the bench as well, if we do need some. Jack Carter's on a 6.2. I'm going to get him off. That is not... He's not doing very well. He's been out muscled in midfield. He's lost the ball there. We're going to get him off. He's not... I don't feel like he's got the right frame of mind to play international football. Even though he was so good in that first episode that we did, big save from Gunn, and that would have all been his fault... We're going to get him off. We're going to get Jack Grealish on. I think we'll just leave Grealish in the middle. Ball goes into the box again. Tibbling Baker does edit it away. It's Linderoff now. Linderoff now. Not, hopefully we can get the ball back here. Hansen picks it up at the edge of the box. Here comes Olsen. Olsen to Lundqvist. To Tibbing. And we haven't played very well in this second half compared to the first half, have we? We really haven't been there. Babsby is so good in that middle. He's so influential. And since he got injured, things have just gone really quiet for us. I'm looking at Harry Kane, though, to get that hat-trick. Here comes Jewison, though, to Kane. Kane come, come early, and he's using his strength there to get the ball over to Grealish. And he loves he finds Grealish lovely. And here comes Sterling, back to Grealish. Can Grealish find Sessignon? And he can. 
insisting on getting the ball into the box. He can. There's Harry Kane. He's saved, but Kane goes for another chance. And there's the hat trick for Harry Kane. And England are absolutely flying here. It's 3 0 for three Lions for free goal. Harry Kane machine. Get in there. Oh, he had at least two attempts at it, got the ball back, fires it into the bottom corner, and Wembley goes absolutely crazy. 3-0, game over. Come on, bring on the Dutch. At this moment in time, we are actually top of our little league as well. I think we've gone above Holland on goal difference. Um, so a draw will probably do us over in Amsterdam. Grealish with the corner, puts the ball in there. There's Gomez with the header, and it's 4-0, and it's an absolute and incredible rout. Absolutely fantastic. Apparently, he's been up for the game since half-time as the defender. Grealish comes on again and does really well. I, I did drop Jack Grealish for the last game against Holland, and I just asked him to start playing better for Napoli. Um, within that time, within a month, his performances have been so much better. So it just shows on the game, if you have a word with the player, if you do drop them and tell them, be honest with them on the game. It can make a massive difference. And in the case of Jack Grealish, it certainly, certainly has. I'm, I'm going to tell the lads that I'm very pleased with that performance. Well done, boys. And there's a confirmation. A 4 nil demolition job for England. And as I said, that puts us top of the table. But it also opens up this crunch game against Holland in Amsterdam at the Johan Cruyff Arena. Ah, winner takes all. But a draw and we are top, top, top of the group. Game day is a us. Come on, boys. This is the big one. The big one away from home in Amsterdam. We're missing Gavin Barsby as well, our influential midfielder. I think what we're going to do is we're going to actually move a few things around because there's players out there who are struggling for fitness after the last game as well. So we're going to stick with the same bat five. So it's Gunn, Alexander Arnold, Gomez, Fry, and Sessignon after getting the clean sheet. But the midfield has changed up a little bit. We've got Carter who's moved into this deep line playmaker position and Eric Dyer who's going to move into this Bazala. I'm actually thinking maybe they both change these two around a little bit and play like that. I think Eric Dyer will be better as a deep line playmaker. I think Carter will be better as a Bazala on this left hand side. Anyway then, Ewison on this right hand side with Ali, Sancho and it says Kenneth Brown. Uh, we're going to go with Harry Kane. He's got a hat trick in the last game. That was just silly. From my assistant manager. But anyway, that is what we're going to go with. Where is Don Baker? He's on 86%. I actually think we, we stick with the same team. I really do. Carter, who didn't have the best game in the world, is actually going to start today. I think Barker on 86% is still a decent player. And they have pretty much got the same team out as they did last time. Frankie De Jong playing central defence once again. They've got Lako Koeman up front, who gave us a bit of a run around. No Clivert, who got injured in the last game as well, last, last month. So come on, boys. Let's go and do this. Um, I'm going to say passionately. I'm going to come in and I'm going to say, give the fans the money's worth. Absolutely. And then I'm going to say to them, I've got faith in you. We're going out there with a bit more of a cautious approach. We're not going on positive like we did against Sweden. We are away from home. I feel like if we went out positive, it would open us up a little bit too much. We need to sit behind the bar a bit more and be more conservative with it. They are very, very much fitter than us. I've just realised that because they didn't play a game a few days ago, um, they had a week off. Well, not week off, but they had um, a game stage off. But here comes Ewison to Harry Kane. Can he put the ball in the back of the net? And Harry Kane does. 12 away from 100 goals for England. Outstanding stuff from Ed Ewison, who just darted at the defence. Running at the defence fantastically. No one was closing him down. He had all the time in the world to just place it through for Harry Kane. And Kane does not miss from that position. And the England fans behind the goal. Will they celebrate? Yes, they do. There they go. They celebrate and go wild. 27 minutes on the clock. And nothing's happened since the goal. And here we come again. Newton is running at the defensive stand. But this time he's tackled. The ball does get played back to Delit. But De Litt just pumps the ball forward straight to Ryan Sessignon. And we start again. Here comes Don Baker. Baker out to Ed Ewison. And Ewison now is coming forward. Who goes for the strike. And every every player, when they get their heads up, they look for Ed Ewison on this right-hand side. Every time. He is definitely turning into one of my favourite players that we've got on the pitch. Sancho, uh, not I'm in the best game once again. Second game in the row. You're on a 6.4. Ball does get added out. Sesson Young then picks it up. Gives it to Carter. Carter to Deli Alley. Can he get the shot away? He does. It's bounced off the bar. But there's Sancho. He sticks it in, but he's offside. Carter with a free kick. It's bounced off the post. And when we're winning, but we're not getting the look. Goal disallowed. Ball off the post. We're absolutely on top here. 
And we go into the break. I think I found my back four as well. They're playing absolutely fantastic. Um, I've got to say to the boys that things are going well here. I know we're even capable of better. Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's go out there, continue what we're doing, and get that second goal. Sancho on a 6.3. He did have that goal this far, though, so we'll just we'll just not look at the ratings just yet. Sessignon is out-muscled a little bit, but Fry does win the header over Kuman. And then now he runs behind the back of him, and it's Kuman. Big save from Angus. Gone again. Fantastic from the Southampton goalkeeper. I am genuinely thinking about getting Jack Grealish on this left-hand side. He'll do a bit of a job out there, because he played very well in that last game. In fact, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're not going to do that. Going to get Raheem Sterling on this left hand side and Carter again. Not having the best game in the middle of the park. Breedish played really well when he came on in the middle, so he's going to just come in and slot into that position. Some of the lads are looking a little bit tired. I might be changing Harry Kane when he's on 75%, Danny Allen 74%, Session on 72%, Trent Alexander Arnold on 67%. So we need to keep that last substitute position available. Half an hour to pretty much go here. We've got to try and get a second goal to just give us some daylight. Here comes Raheem Sterling, though. Fresh legs Sterling, and he's tackled. And now Holland will try and break. But we've got to get players behind the ball here. Frankie Dion has kind of moved into central midfield to run the play. Here comes Kuman with a big chance. Big save from Angus. Gone once again. Fantastic stuff, and England survive. Here comes Jewison. He's coming ball forward, though. He finds Raheem Sterling, who shoots, and Van der Ven with the save in goal for Holland. It's end-to-end -end stuff. Dillerson does really well. He comes out to Aki who goes for the strike and gone. Denies him of a great goal. And he's going to go out for a corner and the corner is going to be taken. It's Dillerson. What's in there? Van der Waal. It comes to Hendricks. It's Van Loom. And the right back, Shaquille Van Loom, with a great name, has brought Holland back into this game. And it is 1-1. They are our bogey team at this moment in time. I mean, they have beaten us in the World Cup. They got an equaliser at the game at Wembley and they just got another equaliser right now. They're still top of the table, but a goal from Holland and that will put us into second place. Gomez is on a 6.5, but he is our best central defender, so we're not going to be taking him off. Here comes Baker now. Turns with the ball, gives it to Ewerson. Ewerson gets a bit of a look there, bounces off and he just picked it back up. It's Deli Alley and England are still coming forward here. Gives it to Sterling. Can Sterling find Session? You know he goes for Harry Kane. Harry Kane to Ewerson, who fires it into the back of the net. And England lead by two goals to one with 20 minutes to go. Fantastic football. Deli Alley plays it to Raheem Sterling. Sterling into Kane. Kane holds it up and finds a perfect pass. And there's the youngster. Ed Ewison, who sticks it into the back of the net and gives it one of those to the Dutch fans. <laughs> Come on. There's a highlight straight after the goal. I mean, this game is literally end-to-end -end stuff. It's fantastic. I mean, all they've done is they've swapped De Jong round with Hendrix at centre midfield and central defence because both of them are centre midfielders. So the Dutch are a bit crazy. Here comes Koeman, though, on it's Van der Waal. And Van der Waal has scored, and it's 2-2. It's pretty much straight away. From the goal, Trent Alexander-Arnold is looking absolutely exhausted out there, apparently, to my, from my assistant manager, Steve Holland. And Holland, by name, by crook, by number, have gone and scored to make it 2-2 here. Oh, nice little finish from the centre, uh, from the right midfielder, Luciano van der Waal. They've got a lot of um, regions in their team. I'm going to go and I'm going to change it then. I'm going to get Trent Alexander-Arnold off. And we're going to give Aaron Dix his first start as an England international in the most pressure of situations. See what he can do. We are still holding on here. We are still top of the table. And we could still try and get the winner if we can. Here comes Jewison. It's Ed Jewison again. But De Jong does well this time and cuts him out. Hendricks pumps the ball forward. They're trying to go over the top all the time. It's not the best header from Joe Gomez. After everything I said earlier in the game, it's Van der Waal. Van der Waal, it's big save from Angus Gunn again. And our left back, Ryan Session Young, not the best player on the pitch when it comes to defence, is not having a great time out there. 6.5. And Holland are really, really, really piling on the pressure. We are very tired. The ball is put forward. Fry can pick it up. It goes to Session Young. And we can break again here. Sterling, Raheem Sterling, coming forward for England, loses the ball. Not the best. I've got a feeling there's another goal in this game. A lot of momentum is going Holland's way. It's Kuman who strikes it to the back of the net. And Sammy Kuman has made it three goals to two to Holland. And, oh, no. We're going to lose our first game as England manager. It looks 
and it's not been the best defensive display from us at all. And he fires it into the back of the net, and it's Holland 3, England 2. Uh, we drop down into second position. Uh, we need to encourage the boys. We are looking a little bit out of our feet, to be completely honest with you. And the Dutch now will probably sit behind. And I'm going to go positive. But only five minutes to go. Can we get something, though? Can we sneak a last-minute goal? And there is a highlight deep in the Dutch half. Can we get something? Get lit now. He's just keeping hold of the ball. Goes for the long ball forward. Fry does win the header. He comes to Don Baker. Baker picks it up. He gives it to Raheem Sterling. Sterling coming forward. Looks for Ewison, but doesn't find him. Aki this time does well. Van der Van does get the ball up the field to Kuman. Kuman to Gravenbach. And the ball has come all the way through. It's Link, And it's a big save from Angus Young again. He should have scored. Cesar Young has been caught out a million and one times on that left-hand side. We certainly need a left-back. And big time. Here comes De Jong to Kuman. Kuman goes for the shot. He's bounced off though. And here comes Deli Alli. And can we break? No, we can't. Frankie De Jong is literally Superman in the middle. He's fantastic. Ball comes out. And it's Bjunt Inc. who's not going to get on that. Can we get the ball? I think not. The time is starting to dwell away. And it is literally seconds to go. Grealish puts it in there. Gomez! And we've hit the post again. Ah. Oh, God. Ball comes in from Grealish. And that ball is headed away by, I think it was Van Dyke or something like that. Anyway, Van something, and it ends, because Van Dyke didn't even get on the pitch. I don't even think he actually plays, does he? Virgil van Dyke? No, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, we walk away from Holland with a 3-2 defeat. Team talk unlucky. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, Holland in Amsterdam, we did our best. Let's just say that. And there's confirmation. I wouldn't say it was a collapse. Well, it was a collapse, but... They are a very good team. Failed to qualify from Group 2. Uh, the board do not regard this as important. So that's that's good. We, well, we didn't we didn't need that anyway, so it's fine. Well, that's the end of the season, if, it, if, if this is how we're going with it. Because there's no more games to play this year. If, have we got any fixtures marked up for next year? No, we haven't just yet. And yeah, the, we've we finished our year with how many games have we played? Six games, four wins, one draw and one defeat. Which is not too shabby, I would say. Hopefully, I'm looking forward to getting into some qualifiers. We're about to start the Euro uh, Europa European Championship qualifiers in this next season, in the next year, in 2027, to go for the 2028 campaign. I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I have. I will be back for some more Mike Bassett England manager action. If you have enjoyed this, go and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Captain Berry Man FM. Also, if you are on Twitter, come and follow me at Captain Berry Man FM as well. And if you want to be part of a football manager community, go and follow these two fantastic Discord channels, which is FM Creators and Bearded Gamers. Oh, you know the drill, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you in a couple of days' time for some more Mike Bassett England manager action. Well, we will be in 2027. Bye.